What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Dima, I'm a piano music. Tariq Nasheed and Dr. Umar Johnson have been two of the largest voices in independent plaque media for the last decade or even longer than that. And both of them have differences of opinion and sometimes don't get along, but they get along in many ways than one that most people don't understand. It is very possible for somebody to love Dr. Umar Johnson and Tariq Nasheed because about 80% of the things that they talk about are on point and it always leads to one, organic grassroots development of the African-American or black community and two, 100% black ownership. Those are two things you don't see from black Democrats or black Republicans. But both of these men have weighed in on the fact that Candace Owens is an alleged sellout. The first person to kind of realize what kind of person Candace Owens is, is Dr. Umar Johnson and what is her goal. Okay, one thing you have to understand, the white power structure through the government or through the corporate structure, they find influential Negroes and they buy them out in order to change the level of consciousness in black America. Candace Owens was sponsored by the white power structure so she could begin to dilute the black first narrative. Candace Owens and Jesse Lee Peterson, these kind of Negroes, these types of Negroes are found and funded. They are found and funded in order to distract from the narrative. See, you have to understand something. Intellectual confusion is the enemy of mass organization, Brother Robert. And I put up a video about Candace Owens saying the real reason why Candace Owens is joining the black sector of YouTube. And I put her face there and with the arrow, the gold teeth. A lot of us as black content creators, we are seeing the grift. You know, Candace Owens coming to the Breakfast Club, coming over to Joe Button, going over to Club Shay Shay. We see the play. She's trying to come over to the black sector and recreate herself. And another person who's also pointed this out is Tariq Nasheed. But Tariq Nasheed took it a step further. Let's check out the clip. Y'all homegirl, Miss Candace Owens. Candace Owens, man, Candace Owens has been out here sound, she's, she's been sounding kind of woke lately. And it was shocking a lot of people. She was going on these black platforms. She went on Joe Budden's podcast. She went on The Breakfast Club. And for a bed wench, some of her verbiage has been kind of sounding like ours a little bit, just a little tinge of it. She's kind of leaning to some of our wordplay. Now, she's still a mammy now. Let's be, be clear. She's still a mammy. But just, she's kind of pivoting a little bit. She was pivoting. And a lot of people were like, okay, where's this coming from? Where's this pivoting coming from? And after she went on these platforms, a couple of days later, the white supremacist platforms that she was on, they gave her the axe. She got fired. Or they cut ties or parted ways. But yeah, Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire cuts ties with Candace Owens. So they gave her the axe. And I think they've been threatening her with giving her the axe and cutting ties with her for a minute because of they perceived something as being anti-Semitic. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm not defending Candace Owens at all. But it's very interesting that Ben Shapiro and all of these right-wing white supremacist think tanks that basically pay Candace Owens to spew a lot of their anti-black rhetoric for them the minute she says something that they perceive as negative about one of their ethnic groups, boy, she's up out of there. No, no, no. You can only talk negative about the Negroes. 
Those are the only people you can talk negatively about. Boy, she got her bed wench wake up call. And the thing about Candace Owens, because she's been such a dedicated hardcore bed wench, she doesn't really have an audience now. Because the white supremacist males, when they turn on her, she has nowhere else to go. So she's trying to low key pull an Amarosa. You know, when Amarosa got the axe from the Trump administration, Omarosa came around black folks like, hey, big head, you know, I was, I was finessing them white people. I was pretending to be a mammy so I can get some intel for the community. And we were like, ah, oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am, you were not doing that. You were a dedicated bed wench mammy. You were mammying it up. They had to kick you out of there screaming. So Candace, his, she's getting her wake-up call. And whenever these bedwinches get their wake-up call, they do the old Queen Holly Berry move. And I always play that clip from Queen. When you come back down to the black community. Help me. I's a nigra. I's a nigra. I's hungry. I nigra. Oh, we don't want to hear the I'm a nigra. We don't want to hear I's a nigra cry. I's nigra. Because she's on the Breakfast Club and Joe Button show trying to portray this. Oh, I'm, I'm so concerned for the black community. You know, the, the, the cooning I was doing, it's basically tough love because... I just want to see black people do better. So my mammying and bed winching and my vitriolic anger towards the black community is just me loving them so much. And I just want them to do better. Cap. All cap. All cap. No, she was towing the line for the white supremacists. That's all she was doing. She was looking out for her damn self. And she's trying to be, and we got a new term, bed woke. Bed woke is when a bed wench tries to pretend to be woke. You have a lot of that. You have a lot of these bed wokes out here who love zaddy but then try to do this performative activism so they won't seem like such a bed wench and this woman could care less about black society because candace owens has sat up here and justified every police killing of a black person that's right a new term bed woke when i saw it i started laughing i couldn't believe it but it makes sense because at one hand, it's a level of, you know, black accountability and loving the black community. But at the other hand is I have a white husband. I like criticizing black people, but we can kind of merge the two. And I don't understand if you're a person that loves the black community and you're a fan of Candace Owens, it can't be like, how can you even justify that? A lot of guys that I see who love Candace Owens in the comment sections, I feel that, well, there's only one word to really classify you as, which is a bed woke sellout. Because there is no way that somebody could be for the black community and criticize the black community like Candace Owens at every given opportunity and be taken seriously. Now, remember Tariq Nasheed at the end, he said this about police brutality and Candace Owens. Bed woke is when a bed wench tries to pretend to be woke. You have a lot of that. You have a lot of these bed wokes out here who love Zaddy, but then try to do this performative activism so they won't seem like such a bed wench. And this woman could care less about black society because Candace Owens has sat up here and justified every police killing of a black person. That's right, at every given opportunity, she's criticizing somebody who's a black man that got killed by the police. 
Now, let's play a clip of her doing it. Nancy Pelosi yesterday said, quote, thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. She also said, quote, that his name will always be synonymous with justice. George Floyd's name will always be synonymous with justice. You have got to be kidding me. And don't tell me it doesn't matter. It does matter. This is the most important part, that he is now becoming synonymous with justice. Let me remind you guys, I've done it before, right? When the media was spinning all the lies and the media first came out and they said, oh, George Floyd was just getting his life together. He moved to Minnesota. He got released from prison in 2014. He was just getting his life together. You remember that? Do you guys remember that media depiction of St. George who was just doing things for kids and just loved the kids and really was trying to set a good example and was just getting his life together? until I reminded people of what his actual record was, because it became apparent to me that there was a reason that they were not producing the police footage, because they wanted to make sure that the lie was perpetuated around the world and repeated over and over again before the truth could get up from bed and put its shoes on. Shoes on, shoes on, shoes on. Now let me just say this, right? I see clips of people that get killed by the police and I'm like, man yes i can definitely see it and sometimes i would talk about it personally or even on youtube like yo that was kind of silly what happened with that person right but you know what because black people have experienced so much police brutality in the past i never publicly talk about it anymore police brutality amongst blacks i will never come out and say that needs to be justified I just, it's just, a, it's something I'm, I'm not gonna do, right? Um, and the reason why I'm not gonna do that is because first of all, I'm also African-American. I've been in situations before and there was one night where a police officer pulled me over for no reason to pull the gun on me because of what? Mistaken identity. And I had to stay there in front of my house for like four hours while they gonna wake my mom up and come get me because they're gonna take me to jail for no reason. And if I would have been any kind of belligerent, they could have killed me, all right? All of us as black men understand we've all been harassed and a black city are pulled over for no reason because of a mistaken identity and illegal searches, all because you're black. Don't matter if you're a medical doctor or an attorney. Listen, I, I went to medical school, graduated with a bachelor of science degree at Sacramento State University. Any kind of educational achievement in America, I've done it, all right? And you wanna know what? I still am leery of the goddamn police, right? Still. So we all know that it's been situations where we could have easily been out of there. The fact is Candace Owens ain't got no place to go. Now for some of us who've been in like the black manosphere, the pro-black sectors, most of y'all know me. I've been over here for years, working with black creators, working with black YouTubers, working with uh, the black community. I have, I don't know how many collaborations with, 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 with black folks, supporting black content creators over a decade in the business. Now you see all these people seeing, oh shoot, we need to go over to the black sector now and recreate ourselves. Yeah, because you was over there selling out and then you found out that after selling out, you ain't got nowhere to go because the, the white people ain't gonna touch you. He said that. The Jews gonna make sure that you will never work again after, you know, what they consider disrespecting their community. So you're not going to Fox. So where you gotta go? Now you kinda come over to independent black media. Now you wanna come over there and, 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 and try to be like he said, bed woke. But guys can't see the play. But those of us who've been in the sector, we see the play. Even with Shannon Sharp, Shannon Sharp used to be highly critical of, of, of black America and not want to deal with black folks hating on black people. Look where he at now, over here in the black sector, why? Because it's money over here. And that's why he over here with all his, uh, he got all black cast club. They talking about nothing but Negro stuff now. Why? Because folks like Tariq, Sinetter, Dr. Umar, me, Tommy, Kevin Samuels, we all made it possible for the audience, for the folks they see now and people who came before us, Jason Black, all them people. It wasn't even a market for that. Now look at the play she doing. She was way on the other side. A lot of us as content creators, ain't nobody hate. We've been over here for years, you know, trying to work with our audience. So now since you ain't got them no more, look at where you at now. Hmm, got pumped and dumped. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, Shady Jackson, back at it again. With another episode of Celebrity Junk. I put you for all your discord bell. We're out.